And welcome back to another episode of Who Would Win in the Week of Who Would Wins. This one comes to us from Todd Fulford, who asked the question, Who would win in a fight, Android 18 from Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, versus Starfire, or uh, Coriander, Coriander, or Coriander R. Yeah, I think that's her tamarine name, basically. But, um, yeah. So it's basically the badass, some of the badass bitches of the respective universes. So, with Android 18, she was an android. A, well, technically, she's not even an android. She's a artificially enhanced human. She's technically a cyborg, but they call her Android 18. Really, they call her 18, or her, first, her real name, I think, Lazuli. Anyway, so, she was created to kill Goku. Now, she, in just in Trunks' future, her and 17 were able to wipe out all the Z fighters, who the majority of them are at least planetary level on some basis. Piccolo and uh, Piccolo, Gohan and Vegeta were the only two real, true, slow, high level planet buster, star level buster characters. Everyone else had basically the capability of doing it, but anyway. So hypothetically, that would automatically put her somewhere in that realm. She easily outclasses Frieza, at least Namek Frieza level Frieza. Easily outclasses him. Outclass Jiro and Nineteen in terms of power. Uh, but she wasn't as strong as someone like 16, Cell, or 17. It is shown that through her training, they can increase their strength, being technically human. But we never really... We know 17 got a major power-up in uh, Super. We don't know if 18 also got a major power-up or not. I don't think she did. In fact, I don't think she really got any power-up whatsoever. She probably just brushed up her skills while she was training with Krillin. On that note, though, her skills include, you know, flight, energy blasts. Her energy signature, just like any of uh, the other androids, can't be sensed by the Z fighters. They don't have key in the same sense that the Z fighters do. What they do have is a, basically a perpetual engine, basically an infinite energy generator. Yes, in DBZ, they found out how to create sustainable energy. What they use it for? World peace? You know, saving uh, a power for all? No, we're going to use it to kill some bitches. <laughs> in the most obscene way possible. I'm going to make androids that are designed to kill you. But yes, they so basically they have limitless stamina in some regard. They can still take battle damage though, and that can still wear them down. But in terms of like actual stamina, they, te they for all intent and purposes, have infinite energy. They can just keep going and going. You can't wear them down in a conventional sense. You actually have to damage them. Which is easier said than done. 18 can move faster than the eye can see. Basically... Beyond light speed on some level, as she, as any, most of the Z fighters, once they hit, um, once they hit the Saiyan saga, they could basically disappear and uh, so fast look like they were dematerializing. Uh, and 18's no exception. She moves fast enough to be able to catch Super, uh, Super Saiyan Vegeta at that point in time, Trunks at that point in time. Uh, strength wise, she can easily break someone's arm with no problem. She can lift a car without any, any relative difficulty. Uh, again, Aaron, she has no strict actual, like, technique. She can, it's like, we've seen her, I believe, copy Krillin's, uh, Kienzan, his destructor there. She has energy attacks. She doesn't, to my best of my knowledge, actually have an energy shield. That's 17 shtick. To the best of my knowledge, I don't think she has an energy shield. Let me actually just look that up just to be sure. I know it's, like, in the game she can absorb energy, but we're not using the game Android 18 because, really, that, that's not, that. That, that, we're not, that's not what happened. That's not uh, how that worked. Uh, and it's like, wow, that, 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 yeah. By the way, the, there's a term, there's a term the youngins, uh, used, uh, came up with, uh, in the recent years called Bay, uh, which is basically, you my babe, it was like, uh, Bay is like, you know, you my girl, you are, you my man, you my, you mine. He's like, mm, I love you. He's like, yeah, 18's kind of a, definitely one of the anime bays. Because, yeah, literally, I clicked it up, and one of the figures is just this... I can't bring it up, but uh, I'm, I'm kind of just looking at it right now. I'm like, I am a dirty, dirty man right now. Wow. Anyway, moving on. Mm. Uh, we are focusing on what her abilities are, not what her assets are. Um, and besides that, those assets are not correct in proportion when you actually see her, you know, design on the in the series. So, moving on. Uh, it's like, what is wrong with you? I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. Uh, anywho, man, 
Okay, energy, okay. Uh, flight, energy attacks, a cell dance, a combination rush attack, Android 18 uses again, use, used by 18 or twin bar. It consists of uh, 17 or 18. That's a combo attack, though. We can't really use that. She knows the destructo disc, though. She, okay, she does have an Android barrier technique. Oh, uh, it damages her, although the formerly prison DBZ. Okay, yeah, she does have a, a barrier. All right. Uh, she does finger beams, high pressure energy waves. Okay. Uh, and then mo all the rest are pretty much just game and card attacks, so we can't really include those. Uh, she also has pretty much basic knowledge of every fighting style there is in existence, being, you know, Andro, uh, Dro programmed her for combat so she would have access to that being the render an army a force so an army so powerful that even the president king of the world that exist um king of the world uh, they were a legitimate threat like to the world and recognizes one so overall they are they are they are she is an immensely powerful combo, uh, combatant, plan, capable of going up against planet busters, capable of uh, expert hand -hand combat, uh, expert martial arts techniques, um, enhanced strength, things, everything along those lines. So, Starfire, uh, Kur Kurand R, uh, I believe that's the name. Uh, she is a Tamarini, uh, as they use for quotes like, my planet was conquered, I will not let it, or yes. My world was conquered. I will not let it happen to this planet, too. You can't understand. I won't let this planet die. She is a Tamaranian who came to Earth. Uh, as that, that, And then she met the Titans. And there you go. Now, we're not using the actual Teen Titans series, like the animated series, or Teen Titans Go, Starfire, because that Starfire is kind of on the low end of the power scale. But what Starfire actually is capable of doing, unlike a Kryptonian which, which absorbs solar radiation... Tamaranians apparently abs constantly absorb ultraviolet radiation converted to energy. So she can absorb ultraviolet radiation from other life forms. The one, uh, she once used this application, uh, application of her powers to weaken a group of Kryptonians who otherwise required ultraviolet radiation to maintain their superhuman abilities. But ultraviolet and solar aren't exactly the same thing. Is that... That's interesting. Uh, which uh, She has flight which links, uh, leaves a distinct energy contrail behind the green one. Looking as if it's coming directly from our stuff has been stayed to have flown light years through space in a short amount of time. But that's traveling speed. We can't factor that into combat speed. Her star bolts, the solar absorption experiments uh, performed on her by the alien science grant her the amazing power and ability to channel and project the same energy into destructive blasts called star bolts. Uh, so Hi uh, Hyperion described star bolts as a highly concentrated solar energy that possessed incredible power. Starfire is also, also has the power to unleash all her stores' energy in a pseudo-nova a blast. It's suggested to be as hot as the sun itself, so she only uses it in dire situations. Uh, durability and strength, though the upper limits of that are, have never been truly revealed. But Starfire's strength is far well above a normal human's, definitely. Durability, she can take a hit. Linguistic assimilation, she can learn other languages through physical contact. She learned English by kiss, kissing Dr uh, Dick Grayson. And hand-to-hand -hand combat, uh, count, uh, combat. Starfire is also an extreme proficient in arm and unarmed combat, having been trained in those arts by the warlords of Okara. Okay, so who wins in the fight? Well, let's hypothetically... So I always go again with the most realistic scenario, and they have to take place in the same world, generally speaking, unless the situation allows someone to basically come in from another dimension. But let's say Jero exists in the DCU and he unleashes the androids. Uh, so like, I'm going to take out the Justice League. Ah, ha, ha. So 17 and 16 and Cell are going to, you know, take on the main big hitters. Whereas 18 is actually the, technically the weakest of the three there, or the four there. But, you know, she's doing her own thing and the Titans come and Starfire is the one who's basically going to take her on and the fight commences. Now, in terms of, in terms of actual hand-to-hand -hand combat, 18 has got uh, Starfire beat. Even if we are to go with uh, the idea that She's an expert in a form of combat. She's not a martial artist. Or if she is, she's not a very well-versed martial artist. She, there's individuals who beat her hands down in true hand-to-hand -hand skill. But she still can hold her own. She's, I'd say her physiology is probably, in terms of her physicality and durability and all that, is probably roughly on par with 18's. But 18's got the overall better skill because she's just got the knowledge pretty much of the world to be as advanced a martial artist as she needs to be. So Starfire is going to come in, you know, throw a punch, maybe an energy enhanced punch, you know, but uh, eight, you know, 18 is going to dodge it. They're gonna, she's going to dodge for a little bit. 
Dark Power kind of like takes uh, unleashes a minor blast of uh, ultraviolet radiation. It kind of singes eighteen, but eighteen's fine. She, she's overall she's overall fine. She starts she throws blasts. Now the bla energy blasts. Here's the thing about the energy blasts. I can't say for certain if they be have any ultraviolet radiation. People obviously people have a certain level of it on them, and Starfire would definitely absorb the energy she needs to off it. But still, there'd be energy that's not ultraviolet in there. They'd still hurt and hit her. So, you know, 18 throws some blasts. Uh, Starfire absorbs what energy she can from it, increasing her own strength while diminishing the attack. But it still hits, and she's mildly singed. So they're both mildly singed. And they both realize it's like, they're hit. They both, like, got a lock of theirs. Like, ah! and then they basically, they collide. 18 starts kind of taking, uh, taking, um, Starfire to town. Just boom, boom, boom. She can, in terms of, now in terms of traveling speed, I don't think, 18 is not the fast over two, because couple of light years and a, and a short amount of time. I, none of the Z fighters have ever demonstrated a, a, like a traveling speed of that comprehension, short of Goku's instant transmission, which is technically not traveling speed. It's a technique. But in turn, but we're not using traveling speed. We're using reflexes and combat speed. And there's not a lot of individuals actually in the DC universe besides someone like Super Speed, like the Flash Line, Superman, someone like Dark Side. Um, Doomsday, individuals who have dealt with light speed or above speed that can really take on that kind of speed when it's actually happening. 18 can it can do that and fight and fight with the best of them while doing it. Starfire can't. Starfire cannot instantly travel and disappear at will like that. So immediately, Starfire is going to be pressed up, getting pressed on edge. She kind of creates a mini dome of energy to keep her uh, to keep 18 at bay, and then just kind of unleashes a huge blast at her. 18 kind of just counteracts with her own blast. And I was just like, yeah, and they're, they're colliding a bit. And it's like, and then 18 kind of just backtracks and just smacks her in. She's, again, blasting it. Uh, Starfire is now really starting to get hurt. So Starfire just realizes that she's got to take this fight somewhere else. So she immediately, like, she all bum rushes 18, who's just, uh, who's a little shocked at this. Just, ah! And just gets her out of town the best she can. And far away, so she's able to get him, get her into like this kind of uh, close by, like uh, deserted area. But me, eighteen kind of kicks her and then throws a destructo disc. Uh, again, uh, she takes what a little uh, ultraviolet comes out of the destructo disc, shrinks the destructo disc, disc a bit, but still like she is, she kind of starts to get ready for another bus. Kind of takes off her hand like there. So uh, if it hit her, I don't. If it uh, a shrunken destructo disc with her durability, I don't know if it would cut through her. But her hand, yeah, cuts through her face, so she's lost her thumb and her fore and her pointer. So she, ah, and she gets a little, she gets nicked on the shoulder. It's like now, 18's getting ready to just end her. But Star Starfire's like, no, it's like I gotta do it, and then just basically goes more or less her uh, pseudo Nova Blast to be hot as the sun itself. 18 sees the senses, realizes she doesn't have time to get away, and then boom! It's basically the equivalent of Superman Solar Flare. Um. Starfire's just tired out. She's bleeding, but she's like, she's just seeing just basically the chart, just black and smoke in the area where 18 was. It's like, and then yeah, Starfire's like, I did it, and so she's about to turn away. It's like, uh, and then all of a sudden, poof, she basically just gets cut and straight in half with another destructus, free a la Frieza style. So she's like, uh, and as she just turns around, she just sees 18 with her energy barrier up because those energy barriers that 17 and 18 had. Or have seventeen could withstand Jiren, who was well above a Starbuster. I have I can I could easily believe that eighteen can withstand a stu supernova with her shield, oh uh, with her energy shield. At very at the very most, it might crack the shield a little bit, might tax it, but it wouldn't destroy it. And, and then Starfire just and then just falls down dead, and, just, and then you know eighteen just goes the hmm, and flies off. KO. So, uh, why does 18 win the fight? Well, 18 can't tire her out. Not in the same sense, uh, like, Starfire would start to tire her out. She'd have to literally be constantly hurt and physically injured for her to be worn down. And, 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 and frankly, Starfire, except for the Supernova, Starfire doesn't have any real level of power that would do that. Yeah, she could maybe point blank some Star Bolts at her, but... She's taken energy blasts before from individuals, frankly, who are far more powerful, from shots that are far more devastating than most of what her Starbolts usually do. 
and walked away almost without a scratch. She's walked away like with some, her clothes got messed up a bit. She maybe got some burned char marks here and there, but she's fine. So durability wise, uh, 18's got the advantage just because, again, besides that uh, Nova pseudo Nova blast, she Starfire doesn't have anything that can really hurt her. Likewise, 18 can just ch uh, can just uh, tire her out. She's just the superior fighter. She's faster. Strike lines are probably on par, but she's got the speed, the skill. The shield is a big thing. The shield could just tank any Starbolt she had. I feel confident it would tank the Supernova. So is there any way that Starfire wins? Unless she can grab a hold of 18 and then do the Supernova? No. And the likelihood of that happening isn't very high. I'll give her a 5% chance of that happening, but I don't think it's very high. Again, the reason is I don't think 18 would be it would allow that to happen. And even if it did happen, she could just honestly throw a Kienzon right from her hand, just slice her right in front of her. Just, you know, just like, eh, as long as her hand's free, just slice. There you go. So I go 18 95% of the time. I'll go 5% to Starfire. I think she put up a solid fight, but she's not going to win it in most of these matches. She's not going to win the long term really at all. But that's just my thoughts. What do you think? Do you think she could completely decimate 18? Do you think 18 completely decimates her? Do you think it's closer than I made it? Let me know in the comments below if you think different. If you do, that's cool. Uh, thanks for watching, though. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. As always, you want us to review something, put it in the comments below. Let us know. We'll do a review of it at some point. Ideas for who would win Star Wars, Superior Magic, What If. Anything you do on the channel, put that in the comments below. Let me know. I'll do it at some point. Again, who would win throughout the remainder of the weekend, going into the remaining weeks. Um... And I'm trying to remember what I'm doing here. Oh, and what if? Don't have any of plans. Might see Sicario. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe does. Don't know at the moment. On Tuesday next week's Ant-Man and the Wasp. Looking forward to that. So thanks for watching. See you later, folks.